Hello and welcome back to my own worst enemy. Um, we're getting ready to start turn two of McPherson's Ridge. A um, little bit overdue, but finally uh, got around to doing it, so let's get started. If you will remember from the first turn, the uh, Confederate forces uh, under Heth had moved up to uh, stop short of Willoughby Run here, and they, they were able to take some shots at the Union, and the Union, of course, returned some shots. The range here isn't so great, uh, so there wasn't a whole lot of damage done. We did have one uh, Union Cavalry unit route and pull back, and uh, at some point, I guess he's going to rally. I think uh, I think there's a, in the rally phase is when they actually get their opportunity to try to come back. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and what else? So I think... Uh, this is turn two, so we are going to have some more forces coming in. So uh, Reynolds is coming in with some more Union forces. And these start, let's see, this is from the the um, the rule book. And this, this is the main scenario. So it says to uh, all these Union reinforcements will start in hex 2815. So 2815 is down here. Oh, that's right here where this um, square is. So let's grab, let's grab those and bring them down. So they will not get to come, well, they won't get to move until the movement phase. So we'll, uh, we'll do that when we get there. And then the Confederates have, looks like a whole lot of artillery coming in and they come in on uh, 1028 like the, like the last guys did. So they'll come in there. Um, so let's, let's get started here. And uh, the first uh, Confederate player phases first, and we have the leader replacement and the commander replacement segment, but no one, I don't think anyone on either side has lost any leaders yet. Um, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think they have. So nothing to do there. So we go straight into this fire segment. And again, the range is not that great. So... Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so they can take some shots here. No reason not to. Um, so let's do that. Let's see. They are using... Go to our fire power table. I think they're using rifled muskets because there's no marker on the... Um, there's no M for the other type of musket on these counters. So let's, um, let's see what the range is. They are, they can hit anything away up to four hexes. So, um, and I'm going to double check again just to make sure that they are, infantry has either rifled or smoothbore muskets. So if, if it doesn't have the M, they're rifled. So yeah, they are using rifled. And I don't think any, any of these um, infantry units have any other type. So four is going to be the range. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So... These guys, one, two, three, four, they cannot hit anything, but this guy, I think he fired on the, on the uh, inflicted some damage on the 17th Pennsylvania here. So let's see, one, two, three, four. So yeah, um, I think he is going to fire at um, this guy. Let's put that there so we know what his target is. And I'm gonna mark him, um, mark the fact that he's firing so we know that he fired. So. If you will recall, um, the multiplier at that range is only a half. So if you look at the fire combat table, um, there are some modifiers here again, uh, targets in a town or higher ground. I think, see, there's on, he's definitely on higher ground. So, um, so there's at least going to be, and they're dismounted the Union Cavalry, so that's two column shifts. So before we do any of that, um, it is, what is there, firing at a, uh, um, seven is their, uh, their strength points as far as their firepower is, con firepower is concerned. So it's basically just half a seven rounded down. So they're already on this column. And then once you factor in that, that, that cavalry units on higher ground and it is dismounted, Union, it's it's going to go two columns, but lowest you can go is 
um, on this one, two column. So it's going to put them here when they fire and they will take a shot. Let's see what they get. A four and that is not enough to do anything. So um, that was him. And then uh, 13 Alabama, one, two, three, four, um, one, two, three. So he can definitely hit this guy or this guy. I'm going to say he's going to shoot at uh, this 12th Illinois. We will mark him, not noting that he's fired. He's at strength. Uh, his fire strength is three, so he's, he's at one on the fire table already. And then, like I said, he can't. It's, it's going to stay on the one because he can't go below it. So let's see what he gets. Two, that's, that's not enough to do anything. So we will continue to move along. That brings us to, I don't know why I threw that over there. I'm going to need it. Uh, the seventh Tennessee can fire. One, two, three. One, two, three. So he could, um, I think he's going to fire at the eighth Illinois. So we'll mark that. He's fired and he's at, he's also going to be on that one column. So he's going to take a shot. And a five that that will hit so that is um one that's a one strength point off of the eighth illinois so i'm gonna grab uh one of the, oh no wait not what is he at four so i need, really need to grab a three and this is just to show that he is now reduced to a three and that's another <laughs> another victory point like i said in the last uh last episode i don't i'm not really a big fan of of gaining victory points that way it's a lot of extra work for nothing but whatever we'll do it so that's another victory point and they've now fired so let's see i don't think anybody else oh this guy probably could uh one two three four uh one two three four one two three four so he could also fire it, and I'm talking about the, who is that? Let's go ahead and move it. It's the 5th Alabama Battalion. So um, they might as well take a shot. They're going to shoot, I guess, at this, uh, the 3rd Indiana here. So they're, they're going to be on the one column too, so they're all the way down here. We'll see what they get. And they get a six, so that's, um, we're going to have to check for um, leader loss here. So first things first, it's uh, one strength point, so they're down to three. Actually, I think I've already got a three here, so let's put that on. And I also forgot, I don't, I think, um, I think we also have to check for a route up here, because I think if you take uh, fire, you have to check for route so let's look at that and we'll do the same thing here on the third um indiana so i think it's a morale check uh let's see the units must have their morale check for the possibility of a route when they receive fire combat casualties and so they did or when they are forced to retreat from uh, melee so yeah, we should have checked um, the 8th Illinois here for route. Um, and they, <laughs> I don't think that would be good here because this, if they, if they route and then they route, this, this whole uh, line over here is collapsing and that wouldn't be good. So um, their leader uh, rating is B. And so that's on this... Um, this unit morale chart. So they're on this B line, eight or less. So modifiers, um, there's no commanders stacked with them. So I um, guess they won't get any of these modifiers. We're not rallying here, not yet anyway. So basically they just need to get um, an eight or less on uh, 2d6. So let's see, we'll clear that. And we're, they're looking for an eight or less. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> they get a 10. Well, that's not good. That means they route. Um, wow, that's not good at all. So we're going to have to grab one of these. Uh, where is the, I guess I picked up the, uh, I already picked up the routed thing here. So let's get, grab one of those again. And actually I'm going to put one back over here. 
so we can keep that. So, all right, they're gonna they're gonna route. <laughs> And continuing the rules on route, I think just like the other one, they have to retreat their uh, maximum movement point, uh, movement allotment uh, away from the enemy. So it's going to be pretty much what that first Pennsylvania did. Uh, they're going to, um, and they're dismounted, so they're going to move at the, at the uh, infantry rate, which is, I believe, five. Yes, so infantry and dismounted cavalry move at five. So he's going to have to retreat five so that would be one and then uh coming up the side of this ridge is going to be uh three so it would be one plus uh three that's four and so he's basically going to come back to this hex so that was one this would be four and then the extra um, movement back is one extra movement point because it's the same elevation, so five. So if they're going to retreat, that's not good. <laughs> um, and so now we have to do the same thing for this, um, this third Indian. And I think uh, we need to also check, because they rolled a six, so we're also going to have to check for uh, leader, um, this uh, leader uh, elimination, see if they've lost their leader here. So... Again, they are uh, they are B. Yeah, B. Um, B is their. Well, let's move this down here. So they're on this column, the B column for their leader. We're going to roll two uh, d6 again and see what the results are. So here we go. Let's clear that and roll. And they get a seven. So what's a seven? It's uh, nothing, not event. So they don't they don't lose their leader after all. And. Uh, we need to check for route, so it's the same thing here. So they're they're bees, it's just like the other one we did. So it's um, it's eight or less. So let's hope they don't route because that would be really bad. And they roll a five, so they do not route. They hold. So that's going to bring us. I think that is everybody that can fire. So that was this um. This unit that fired, this guy is still, he's one, two, three, oh, wait a minute. One, two, three, four. He, he might be able to get a shot out. One, two, one, two, three, four. So I think he actually could fire. That is the 14th Tennessee. Um, one, two, three, four. And I think that's well within his range. It is, so... He's going to fire. He'll fire at the one. The only one he can really hit is this 12th Illinois. So let's see what he does. We will clear this and it's just 1d6. So nothing. He gets nothing. Uh, I don't think anybody else can. One, two, three, four. Yeah, these guys are out of range. So I believe that was everybody. And I forgot to um, add yet one more victory point <laughs> to the Confederates up here. It's, um, let's do that. So, okay, so that was the fire segment and then the route segment. And um, let's look at this. Just to, I just want to see what... What actually happens in the route segment? Because I want to—I don't—I think this is the okay. So non-phasing units which suffered casualties must be checked for leaders and routing. So basically, I kind of did this out of order, and you don't really—they don't retreat immediately. That's because other other units would have an opportunity to fire, and I don't think they could have done it here anyway. But you don't retreat them until this segment because other units could fire on them. So. Uh, one, two, three. Well, he actually could have, so I probably shouldn't have done that, but we're going to let that stand as it is. It was bad enough as it was. Um, so that's the route segment. So it is for the non-phasing player. Got to remember not to do that <laughs> during the uh, fire segment. And this will bring us to the movement segment. So a couple of things we got to do here. We've got to, well, first we've got to get these fire markers off. Actually... Uh, no, see, I didn't want to pull those off yet because, um, so this guy, this should stay on, uh, this guy fired. 
And did anybody else fire? I think this guy fired. So that should stay on. And the reason is because they can't move and fire in the same, uh, the same uh, phase. So... Uh, anyway, like I was saying, a couple things are going to happen here. So the fact that they fired and um, I probably should have looked at that a little bit harder because I, I forgot that, that that's the case. Um, I'm not so sure they would have fired. They might have tried to move a little bit closer, but that's okay. They, they do have some reinforcements coming in. So what this does mean, though, is um, we have all this artillery coming in now. There are five of those artillery units coming in. And they'll start here. Um, and so they look like uh, there's a mix of artillery. We've got Napoleons and uh, howitzers and uh, those are one of the peas, parrots. Yeah. And their ranges, so uh, if we look at the Napoleons and uh, the ranges are 11 and yeah, uh, the yeah, so basically 11 is about far as they're going to be able to go. Well, there is one rifled one up there, I think, an R, so that one can go much further. It can go 15. So, uh, and the movement rate for artillery is 7. What I might want to do is bring the artillery, as I said, they, they'll start here, and I might just want to deploy them along this ridge line and have them fire because from this ridge line they can certainly go one two three four five six seven yeah they can go um they can certainly hit those um troops at that range and those really aren't not too bad of a chance to hit so i might initially do that these are going to start uh limbered so they'll be able to move their full or they'll be able to um yeah move their full rate and i can also i believe in this game, they, they can unlimber in the same movement action. Let me double check that too, because it could be that they move and fire in this round, which would be horrible for the for the Union, but let's see. Um, so movement restrictions. And again, this is one of my complaints with this, this old rule book. It's... Uh, <laughs> The rules are, some of the rules are, well, not some of them. There's a lot of rules that are scattered throughout this thing. And, I, and the artillery one, I think, was one of those. Um, I thought that I had marked that one here. So here's artillery. It may limber, move, and then unlimber in the same turn. But it may not fire in that turn. So, okay, so they can actually move and unlimber in the same turn. Which would set them up for... Um, the next turn. They could stay. It says they, it may unlimber and fire in the same turn. So as long as they don't move, they could unlimber and fire. But they're going to have to move here. So I think I am going to bring these artillery pieces in and set them up along this ridge. Uh, the Union does have an artillery piece here. So they're probably going to... And let's see. Which unit? We said this rifled unit has the greatest range. So we might want to consider that. And actually, let's, let's bring him in first. So, uh, movement of seven, I said. So, yeah, we're gonna let's put him down here. So he could go. And remember, it's half a movement point on the road. So it'll be one, two, three. Yeah, he can he can easily go one, two, three. Remember, facing is, is important here. So if you put him that way, he has these uh, front side hexes that he can fire through. So he could certainly hit anything like this um, if, he, if his facing is this way. And then these other ones I'm just going to bring in. Um, I'm just going to bring them in along this ridge. And they have enough to move to where I'm placing them because they're not going very far. And if we just place them... In, anyway, anyway... Uh, if, if we, let me see something here. If we flip it, should say limbered? Yeah, so they actually came in limbered, but um, they are going to unlimber once they deploy along this ridge line. So that's going to give them, that's going to give them um, range to all these uh, Union units here. This is, <laughs> maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something here, but this, it doesn't look so good for the Union uh, right now. 
uh, okay, so they have moved, so I'm going to now mark them as moved um, because they can't take any other action this this segment for them for the uh, what is it called this phase I guess for the uh, Confederate so what could happen is I could now move these units that didn't move or fire and so here's a um, archer is down here so he didn't move and I don't know if you remember from last time I said if uh, one of these leaders is stacked with artillery it actually allows that artillery piece to fire twice, so it kind of adds a command um, rating to that artillery piece. Like it, it just shows that the leader, sh the leader is there that knows how to direct the fire. And I think, let's see, where is it? I think it's an optional rule. And yeah, the commander bonus is an optional rule, and I did say I was going to use most of these. I think I'd said I wasn't going to use... Um, ammunition depletion, but I'm kind of rethinking that one again now. That might be interesting, because on that one, you know, if, if you roll a one when you're resolving your artillery fire, then there's a chance that, you know, that 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 artillery piece could run out of ammunition. So if you roll a one, then you have to roll again. And if you roll a one or a two, then there's no more ammunition for that artillery piece. I, I, might, I might actually use all these optional rules if I can remember them. <laughs> we'll certainly try to do that. So anyway, um, I think, see this guy, these guys couldn't fire because they are out of range. So they might actually try to move up on, on this, uh, on this, uh, maybe flank the, uh, this cavalry line. So maybe, um, and to cross a, to cross Willoughby Run, so they'd be crossing uh, a stream. It would just simply add one to whatever the uh, movement factor is on the other side. So it, it's. And for them, it's just a one over here, so it would be two to move into this hex. So it would be uh, two, and then they could go three, four, five, but they certainly wouldn't want to land in there. So what I could do, though, is move them one, two, three, and if I stopped them there, they'd be one, two, three. So you could actually start chipping away on this side. So I think I am going to move the second Mississippi. I'm going to go one, two, three. Uh, and his firing, remember it's these, these forward three hexes is, is where he's able to fire out of. So here he can fire, he could hit anything along this line and around. So he could hit these two units from where he's at. One, two, three, four. Puts him on the edge of his, um, his range, but like you saw, it can be effective. You roll a five or a six. And... You know, for these things to do any good, they've got to get up close. They need to be two, one or two away, and that's that's asking for trouble if you if you run up against that line. So I think I'll also have the uh, 55th North Carolina do kind of the same thing. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So now he these this these two can now hit these two Union units. So. I'm going to move them there, and so we'll mark those as moved, and I think I'm going to take Davis and move him back to this artillery piece, for now anyway, because he can at least uh, direct that battery, and, and, you know, like I said, that's an extra, that's an extra, um, an extra attack for that artillery piece. And double check it again, but it says, yeah, and this rule is rather abstract. It does reflect the importance of having a commander who knew where to direct artillery fire. So if you have a division or corps commander stacked with an artillery unit, it allows that unit to fire twice at the same target in the fire combat segment. So it's just two two back-to-back -back attacks, which is pretty powerful, pretty strong attack. So we will um, definitely move him back. And actually, I think I'm going to do the same thing with Archer here. So Archer's going to come back to here. So that will give those two artillery pieces um, extra an extra attack. So that's pretty good. And now we have the first Tennessee who needs to come down here and get into firing range. And of course, you know, remember that this will put them into firing range as well. So if I move them to here, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so if I move him down here, that's one movement point. One, two, three, four. He can hit here. So let's do that. And everyone is moved. 
Everyone has fired, so that will take us down to this defensive fire and withdrawal segment. And if you'll remember here, this is where the um, Yugen can now return fire, or if they think there's going to be a melee attack, they can actually um, withdraw. And they're not going to do that here, though. They're going to... Certainly, they're going to um, return fire. So let's go ahead and take these off now because uh, the Confederate side can no longer move or fire in this phase. And we'll need the, to mark the uh, Union side to see who's fired and who hasn't fired and who's moved. So we'll do that. And we'll start up here with the 6th New York. So they are, let's see, what, what weapon were they using? I think it's the uh, rifled carbine, if I recall. But we'll double check the weapons. So they are using, yeah, well, there you go. Where's, if I can find it, like I said, it is a small rule book, but I printed it out and the pages are <laughs> everywhere. So cavalry has either uh, cavalry has either uh, breech loading carbines, yeah, breech loading carbines. I think I said rifled. So now breech loading carbines, rifled muskets, or shotguns and sabers. Well, the Union doesn't have shotguns and sabers. It's only a Confederate thing. So they have breech loading carbines. It says all Union cavalry has breech loading carbines. So the range on those things are, I think, pretty good compared to what the rifled muskets were. So well, no, they're not either. So they they can only fire two away. Uh, but, oh, that's not good. So maybe, maybe they can't return fire here. One, two, I don't think anybody can return fire here. So that's not good. Um, but we do have an artillery piece they can fire. And I did stack Buford with, uh, that artillery piece. So they'll actually get to, to fire twice at whatever target they choose. So get our little handy dandy target marker out here. Um, I think they're going to fire, let's see, these are, um, what was the range here? Uh, yeah, they're good out to 15 because they also have those rifled guns and it's, it's, it's a one all the way out. So that's pretty good. So this is going to be, this is pretty powerful. So I think they're probably going to choose to attack, uh, the 42nd Mississippi up here because it is such a powerful unit. So it's one, two, three, four. They're five away. Um, so it's going to be a one multiplier and they are at six. That's not too bad. So right off, that's going to put them on the, um, we'll clear this. Uh, that would put them on the, this three, six column. And are there any modifiers? Let's see. It's not a town hex. It's, they're not on higher ground. They're not in the woods. It's not Union Cavalry. Infantry or dismounted cavalry fired at by only artillery. So this will shift the column down to the 1 2 column. And still not sure why that's the case. <laughs> I haven't looked that one up. Why is it a penalty for that artillery to fire at? Uh, infantry all by itself. I, I don't know. Um, so it looks like that's all the modifiers. And going back to the optional rules, like I said, we have, um, we're going to have to check for drift here. Uh, and that is the way that works. It's accuracy. So uh, if a 10, a 10 or greater is rolled, this will drift. So this is the first attack and let's see where, where it goes. See if it drifts, and it does not drift, so it's it's dead on. So it's actually going to hit the 42nd Mississippi, and let's see what they get. So clear this, and they, oh, wait a second here. Um, now, okay, I was looking. There's a there's a there's another combat table for artillery, and it's, it's an optional table again, where but it only applies if artillery is firing at artillery. So they're not doing that. They're firing at Infantry, so it's just a straight roll. And let's see what we get. Um, we got a three, so that's that's a miss. But they get to fire one more time because that leader is stacked. So they're going to take another shot. And another three, so they miss. 
so he fired and we'll bring this back and i think one two yeah that's that's all the firing the the uh, defensive fire anyway that the union can do there won't be a melee segment um and that'll bring us down to rally and i don't think this applies to the union side i think it's strictly for the phasing player side so it'd be uh if anything this would be rally for um the confederates if they had broke but i don't think they did so the phasing player now determines if any of his routed units will rally so uh they do not do that but this does tell me that that's where we're going to see if these union these union units that routed will rally which is bad because um if they were in a firing position, then they wouldn't get to fire at all this turn, but they're not. So that's going to end the Confederate phase. And now we're going to go into the um, Union um, phase, which is these same eight segments. And we'll take um, this off because that's not going to apply here. And um, I think that's it. So I gotta remember those guys are coming on the board down there. Um, so leader replacement and commander, that's nothing there for us to worry about. So we're gonna go right into the fire segment. So again, none of these um, Union cavalry, cavalry units are in range to fire on these Confederates. So, but the artillery piece still is, so Another round of artillery fire, and I think he's going to pick that same target. And let's see, you know, I don't think I checked for drift on that second, sh <laughs> that second shot. Um, oh, well. So, okay, well, let's check for that now. Let's see if this first shot, does it drift? And it does drift. So when it drifts, you have to see if it goes, which direction it goes. And I, th uh, I can't honestly remember what. The die roll is there, but let's check that. Um, uh, and I'm looking through the um, the shotgun rule book. This is more of my fault. I shouldn't blame the a rule book in this case. It's me printing it out, and I found it. So okay, so accuracy uh, one to three is under fire. And anything else is is over fire. So let's see. It was under fire, over fire. That is over fire. So that could be. Well, it could have been good, but it, so basically that shot would land there. So that's unfortunate. So they're getting a fire again because they do get the command bonus. So let's see if under fire, over fire again. And this does not. So it's going to, going to be right on target should they hit so they are still at their six and the multiplier is still one right so it is on the six column but they're firing at that infantry unit so it goes down the columns and they fire oh that's a hit so that's um and a, and a check for leader loss here so yikes so let's go ahead and bring this out and this will take them down to six. And that is, I think I remember to do this. That's a victory point for the uh, union side. And we have to check, well, no, we don't check to see. Um, <laughs> we, we don't want to check yet to see if there's... Um, routing or um well it says route but i wonder um it doesn't think about checking for leader law so i'm wondering if we check that now i don't know why we wouldn't check for leader loss now because that's not going to have an effect on anything so let's go ahead and do the, let's go ahead and do that check so their leader rating for this unit is c and so that's um Maybe a seven or less. There's no modifiers because there's no one there. So they got to roll a seven or less to not route. Okay, so they don't route. 
So we've checked for that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that was leader loss, not route. Um, and so I need something to remind me. So I'm going to put this little doohickey over here um, to see if, to remind myself to do that check for routing. So I think that is all the firing that the union can do, unfortunately. Um, so that's going to bring us to the route segment. And again, this is the check for route for the uh, non-phasing player. Um, so this leader rating of C, um, and we said seven or less, so let's see, do they route? Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> they get snake eyes, so I don't think that means anything special. I'm going to move that back there, and that is that. So that brings us down to the movement segment for the union side. So this guy can't do anything. But we do have um, Reynolds coming on the board now. So let's see what we have here. And like I said, these guys are coming in on uh, 2815. Here's our leaders, it looks like. It's Meredith Reynolds and Wadsworth, it looks like. Um, and you see the M here on this infantry unit indicates that he's not using... Um, he is not using uh, uh, rifled muskets. He's using smoothboard muskets. So we'll have to remember that when he gets to where he's going to fire. And let's see what else we have here. Another one of those M units. Oh, another artillery piece coming in. So Union moves. And I'm going to go ahead and show him as being limbered because he's going to start limbered. Um, let's get this die, this die out of the way. So the this guy can move seven infantry can move um, five and these leaders can move nine so probably uh, let's move the leaders last and see how far these um, other units get and we'll start with um, let's go ahead and start with this artillery piece they really need to get that up to the line as quickly as they can and there's two ways they can go they can move along this road through Gettysburg and then back up um, one of these roads to get to the battlefield. I think actually it's probably quicker if they just um, move straight across the uh, the open terrain here. I, it's if it's if it's not if it's not faster that way. It's probably about the same. And we could look. You know, it's like I said, this guy can move seven, so it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he could get to about right there and let's grab well let's not move that yet let's grab a marker just to show uh, that he could this artillery piece anyway the union the union the uh infantry couldn't move that far anyway they'd be stuck back here in gettysburg if they go through the town trying to get uh extra speed on that road movement so if they if this artillery piece went straight towards uh seminary ridge they could move one two, three, four, five, six, um, and they'd have to stop there. So yeah, so you can see that it's probably just as quick to get, uh, just to go across this sunken road and cross this um, whatever uh, run this is, Steve's run, I guess that comes down through here. Probably better just to, to just get in battle that way. So let's do that. Let's march them across the fields and stay out of Gettysburg. They might want to go in there and go shopping or something and get totally delayed. We don't want that. So anyway, like I said, this artillery piece needs to get up there quick. So he can go one, two, three, um, four, five, six to here. And he can't get up that ridge because uh, ridge movement was three to go, oh, four if you're artillery. So yeah, there's no way they could go up that ridge. So he's going to do that. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And he's going to stay limbered. I'm not going to unlimber him, not behind that ridge. Um, and then let's move an infantry unit. And these guys can only move five. So for him, it would be one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. 
So I think that's going to be our, our better movement too. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. I think he's going to come up here. Um, and then this guy. One, two, three, four, five. And I can only have two in a hex. One, two, three, four, five. So let's go ahead and move him here. And we'll grab this guy. One, two, three, four, five. And he could swing around this way. I don't know if I like that though. I could also go one, two, three, four, five. So remember it's half a movement. So he could go one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four. Did I move this guy too far? One, two, three, four, five. No. One, two, three, four, five. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna um stack these. So this is a valid move. And then this guy. One well actually it's half. Well, one, two, three, four. So yeah, I could stack these two. And then our leaders can move nine. So they I don't want to get them too far. Well, maybe I do want to get them a little further ahead because they would certainly help uh, things like this. So maybe we move one, two, so wait, that's, uh, oh yeah, I wouldn't get the full movement benefit because you're moving into this one. So it's, you're not going to get the half. So it's not going to matter. So if I start Reynolds here, it would be, um, and also do I want to separate them from, Reynolds is, he's yellow, but I, I don't think that, I'm not even sure that has significant meaning with this, this grouping because there's, he's the only yellow guy there. I think it is yellow. Wadsworth is yellow too. So Meredith would probably want to stay with um, his own guys here. So we'll remember that when we get there. But Reynolds can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's move Reynolds here. So I'm going to have him swing around and hopefully get up here and rally these guys. Uh, and then Wadsworth, probably something similar. Maybe I want to bring him around. Well, no, we still have this guy. So he could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, let's do that. Let's bring him up here. And Meredith, we want to hang out. Hang, hang out. He's going to hang out with these guys. <laughs> He's going to stay with these guys. So he can certainly get into this range. So we're going to bring him out to there. And then as far as the line goes, I don't, I don't think I want to move anybody here. I mean, this guy, um, you could certainly mount him and move him. But I think if I do that, he's not going to have an opportunity to fire. So I don't really want to do that either. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave him where he's at with the hopes that these guys, these rabbit guys move back up. And so that's going to be the movement phase. And then we go back to defensive fire and withdrawal, but this is for the Confederate side now. And let's move that off. And again, they'd be crazy not to fire back here because it's, it's a free shot basically. So... And now these guys are in range too. And all this artillery can fire. So that's probably not good. Uh, so starting here, one, two, three, four. So they're gonna take a shot at uh, the sixth New York from four away. Oh, let's see, that was four. Strength point eight. So that is, uh, so they actually start Oops, something is going on here with the mouse. But they actually start on the, this column now. Um, but it's half. Um, so it's, I said eight, right? So it's actually going to put in here. Is that right? Eight, yeah. Eight times a half, four. So they're starting here, but they're firing up the hill. And it is Union dismounted, so... It's still going to be here, and so they're they're shooting. And let's see what they get. Ooh, they get a six. Well, so that's enough to inflict a casualty. 
and so that'll take them down to three. And I'll get one of these little markers to show that we need to check for route when it's time. Um, although, what I'm wondering now is, so in the defensive fire segment, this is kind of weird. Um, we also checked for leader, leader loss, right? Because we had the uh, six. But this is different because this is occurring in the defensive fire phase. So when do we check for route in the defensive fire phase, I guess? Uh, let's take a quick look. I guess it would be... Um, I don't know why you wouldn't check it now. Otherwise, they'll get to fire again. That could be the reason why you don't check it now. But I don't see how they could take that shot and then fire and then route. So let's see if I can find out where defensive fire. So this is in the sequence of play, and here we go with the shotgunning. It tells us to go back and look at some other section of the rule book. So we go find section eleven. And retreat. It's not retreating, so it's route and rally. Here we go. Let's see if there's a blurb about. And of course, <laughs> I don't think I have this page either, do I? Um, yeah, here we go. Route and rally. So. I don't see it. So it's a, it, it is a um a route check, but I don't know why this route segment and let me look at that again because maybe that was strictly for the non-phasing side, so, yeah, okay, so we're out. Non-phasing, yeah, okay, so that's what it was. So the non-phasing player is the one that we would delay this on, so that's where I'm getting confused. So this this is not, this this is the phasing player, so the, the check is immediate. So we don't really need this because it's the uh, union side. So, um, so he took his, did I give him their, no, I didn't. So they get a victory point for causing this, um, casualty we check for um let's check for the leader loss first it was a c so we're on the c line seven or less and this is six so that they will not route and now we're going to check for um what happens to the leader here? So that's it's still C that we're looking at. And okay, so two of those. And we roll a four. And it's a no effect, so the leader's okay. Oops. And so that's it. They they didn't um didn't lose their leader, didn't uh, route. So they're okay. So now um, the 55th North Carolina can fire at, let's have them fire at the 17th Pennsylvania. One, two, three, four. So it's the same thing. They're going to be on this one, two column again for the same reasons. It is one D six and they fire. And that's a miss. And the... Uh, this guy's down to six. One, two, three, four. So he's going to fire now at the ninth New York. Same column. And that's a hit. So they will take a loss. So they're, oops. 
My mouse is jumping. It's like the computer is doing something it shouldn't be doing. I don't know why. <laughs> I've lost control of the mouse. Don't know what's going on. So, no, not a four. A three. So they're down to three. And we will check for a route here. And it was a C rating, seven or less. Oops, that's a nine. So that's our route. So they're going to move, and they're on a road here. Well, actually, they're on this railroad cut. Um, and I, th I don't know if that, let's see. So this two for the railroad cut is to move through it. it I, this isn't along that, uh, I'm gonna say that it's just a one. And I'm gonna treat it as clear because it's not a road and it's they're not moving up or down the railroad cut, they're moving through it. So they would go, and this unit's the one that fired on them. They're trying to get away from him, so it would be uh, one. Uh, and then it could be, oh, they're going up, well, let's see. So it would be one, four to get to here, and then five to get to here. So that's probably what they're gonna do. They're gonna route this way. So let's show them routed that way. Uh, and I didn't put a route marker on them, so we'll do that. And okay. That will bring us down to the 13th Alabama. One, two, three, so they're probably gonna fire at this unit again. And it's going to be the same table. Let's clear this. And let's see what they get. A four, which is a miss. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it looks like they can take a shot. Oops, let's move this back. And it's going to be that same column again. That's a five, so that's a, that's a hit, and so that'll be a victory point again. And this will take them down to one. Not enough for a leader lost check, but it will be a... Um, I don't know why my mouse is freezing here, this is weird. Um, it will be a morale check, so B, eight or less. That is an eight, so that's okay. They do not take a, uh, well, they don't uh, route is what I'm trying to say, so they're okay there. And we move on down to the seventh Tennessee, who will fire at that same unit. Oops, what did I do? I grabbed two. Uh who can fire at that same unit and could, in theory, eliminate it if it hits it. So it is that same column. Ooh, and he does not eliminate it. So that's good. Good news for the union. It's barely hanging on here. And then one, two, three. Well, we got another shot coming in. One, two. Yeah, all these guys can fire. So this guy's going to fire. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so he's on that same column. So they're going to have to stand up to some more fire. Let's see what happens here. Nope, that's a miss, so that's good. And we have a storm in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, and then this guy is going to fire. Uh, same thing. He's going to fire at this lone dismounted cavalry unit here. And he misses, so that's good. So this whole front line has done their fire, and now we have the artillery pieces. So this could get nasty. <laughs> I think we're gonna have um, two Napoleons and two parrots. Um, and I think we have to combine their firepower if they're firing on the same unit. Um, 
Multiple fire. Here we go. Artillery firing into the same target hex must combine their fire into one total. Um... So yeah, so we're, it's okay. So it's it's gonna be a totaling of whatever they had. So first things first, we'll need to check the range and who he's firing at. One, two, three, four, five, six. So either one of these. I guess he's gonna take a shot at the sixth New York here. So um, let's check for drift. And it's um, 10, 11, 12 is drift. So let's see what he gets. There's no drift. So this will, if it hits, it'll be dead on. And what's he got? He's got two N's and two P's. And from six away. So the Napoleons are at half at that range, and the Parrots are at one. So it's going to be two plus one is three. So they're going to be firing at three. And there's going to be some modifiers because they are firing. It's, um, it's not higher because they're on this ridge. So I'm going to say that's not a higher elevation. Um... It's not on higher ground, it's not in the woods, but it is. They're going to get the one column shift anyway. Look at that, because uh, it is dismounted Union Cavalry. Um, so they fire. And again, they've got to get a five or six to hit. Two is a miss. And now we come down to, this was our parrot, I believe. So let's see, wait a second here. It's uh, no, those are Napoleons, and there there's four of those. So, but it can fire twice. Calls um, who is that there? Davis is there, so Davis can let them fire f twice, and they're gonna fire one, two, three, four, five, six away at the seventeenth PA. So six away again. Um, and the Napoleons, that's half. So it's three again, but the same thing. They're firing on dismounted cavalry, so it's on that same line. And it's a miss. I didn't check for drift there. Well, it missed. It wouldn't matter anyway. So, moving right along. Uh, two N, two P again. One, two, three. I think what I'm going to do is have these two maybe fire on this artillery piece. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven away. Um, and Buford's there, so we have to be careful here. Uh, I think there could be a leader loss if they take casualties. So if seven away, it's going to be the same thing that we had last time. It's going to put them on the three. And then back down to the one. Uh, but this is different because we have, we're using the optional rules where we're going to have artillery fire on artillery. So that's going to put us on this um, artillery combat table. And the number of fire factors is on the one to six column. And I don't think, let's see if I can show this what I'm looking at to you. I don't think, did I print this out? Look at that, I did. I was thinking of you guys. <laughs> so basically, it's going to be on this column. Uh, add one to the die roll for each hex less than a range of three. Okay, now, so that's not not less than a range of three. And the target is not in the woods, I don't think. No, I don't think so. No, they're on a the ridge. So um, it's just going to be a roll. And let's see what they hit. Um, that's a hit, and but I did not check for drift, so let's start over. 
and let's check for drift first. So that is, it did not drift. And let's see if it hit. It did not. Um, so that was here. Um, and that was this guy. And so now we're down to, we have two H and two N. So one, two, three, four, five, six. He's also at seven. I'm going to have him fire on the artillery too. So two H and two N at seven. So the howitzers are halved and well, they're all, they're both halved. Again, it's going to be on the, uh, the one to six fire factor column here. So First, we check for drift. No drift, but um, this is what I was talking about with, well, this is drift. I don't think we check for uh, ammunition depletion on this, so no drift. Um, so this will hit the artillery piece if indeed it hits. Again, on the one to six, and let's see what they get. A three is not enough for a hit, so they miss. Good news for the artillery piece. And then finally, this is four of these rifled guns firing. I think these are the ones that had the long range. Yeah, and they're uh, at four at the end, but they're going to be reduced because they're who they're firing at. But they do get to take two shots here. And I think they're going to fire at probably... One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to have them fire at the 12th Illinois. And so let's get, uh, what did I say they had? Four. So it's going to be four. It's still going to be on that column. But let's check for drift first for the first shot. No drift. So they do get a shot. And they roll a four, which is a hit. So that will eliminate um this unit so what does that mean in terms of victory points well they certainly get one for the strength point loss i think so one for that and they eliminated the unit so that's got to count for something i think uh no, it doesn't. That's odd. They do. It's just they get victory points for each um, strength point lost. Then each strength point captured. And then they get five if they kill an officer or capture an officer. And they get two for each enemy gun captured. So, okay. Well, they just get one victory point for that. And this unit is now removed. So we're going to put this back and we'll just stack this up over here with his comrades. And he is out of the game. All right. So, and that was no need to fire again. So that's it. That's the, um, <laughs> that's the defensive fire for the uh, Confederates. That was brutal. That was brutal. I still don't think it's looking so good for the uh, Union side here. All right. Uh, that takes us down to melee. We're not in any way, shape, or form into a melee uh, position yet. Then to rally. So this rally is um, for the phasing player side. And let's see. We are going to want to... Um, da, 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 uh, 12.4 is what I'm looking for, it says. So rallying units. And it's going to be the same thing here. So we'll start up here with the 9th New York. And they've got a C leader. So I'm going to roll on that same route table. Um, but th we're going to have a plus one modifier because this is a rally attempt. So... His leader rating is C. 
looking for a seven or less with a plus one to the die roll. So seven or less, and he rallies. And he gets, nope, see, so that's a nine. So he stays routed, and there's no indication that he's going to move or anything. And so then we'll come down to this um, first PA, and let's see if they rally. So their leader is what? A C. Looking for the same thing here. They have to get a um, seven or less with a plus one added to whatever they get. <laughs> So that would have worked, except for it's a rally attempt. So it's really an eight that they rolled. So they do not rally. And now we're down here to, they've got a B leader in the eighth Illinois. So B means they're looking for an eight or less. And we add plus one to whatever we get here. Well, that works. So they get rolled a five plus one is six, which is less than eight. So they rally. That means we can remove this routed marker now. And that is it for rally attempts on the um, the Union side. And that will be the end of the Union player phase. And that will take us into record keeping and advance the turn marker. So that's end turn number two. Uh, we will continue on with turn three when we return. But let's take a quick look at the status now at the end of turn two. Uh, well, we saw all of this Confederate artillery come in and deploy along uh, her ridge here and we saw two more of the Union cavalry units route now one of those has rallied so it should be coming back we have some uh, Union reinforcements coming in and I don't know yet where I'll send those reinforcements we'll, we'll mull over that when we come back um, I don't like what I'm seeing so far though for the Union it looks like the Confederates are doing pretty darn good, in my uh, unlearned opinion, <laughs> for the first time I played this game. Uh, I don't know if they're doing good or bad. Um, we'll see. So that's it. The score stands 7-1. Uh, to one. I don't put a whole lot of faith in that yet, though, because the Union really hasn't had any, uh, any good uh, chances to attack here yet, so maybe they will. It don't, looks worse than it really is, I think, score-wise anyway, so... We'll see. We'll see when we come back. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this turn. And if you would like to leave any comments below, please do. Like I said, my first time playing this game, this old classic. I don't know if anybody listening has even played it. But if you have, I'd like to hear from you. Let me know. And let me know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> and if you'd like to offer strategy, even if you haven't played this game, and you'd like to offer some strategy as to what I should do with the Confederates and or the Union side, let me know. Uh, I'll take any help I can get. So that's going to do it. Uh, again, thanks for watching.